Hello YouTube and welcome back to Used and Reviewed. In this video I'm going to be unboxing the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max and taking you through some of the features of this recently launched board. So if you cash your mind back to the end of July I uploaded a video on a PC I'm planning to build based on the new Ryzen 3000 CPU. At the time lots of people were having issues flashing the BIOS on the original Tomahawk boards to accept the new Ryzen CPUs. What I did mention in that video is that MSI clearly acknowledged there was a problem and announced the new Max version of their motherboard to fix some of the issues. And I also said if you plan to build a PC based around Ryzen you should probably wait until those Max motherboards are out and available to buy. If you get a chance check out the video as it details the PC that I'm planning to build for this channel and if you haven't already hit subscribe and hit that bell notification to get notified of any of the new content on the channel. So going back to those fixes what have MSI introduced with the new Max boards? Firstly the new motherboards have increased increased BIOS memory from 16 megabyte to 32 megabyte. So the snazzy Click BIOS 5 interface is back along with RAID functionality. There's also faster memory support out of the box up to 4133 megahertz. So you can configure your memory kit to run its advertised speed with the AXMP function. And of course, Ryzen 3000 support straight out of the box without having to flash the BIOS with an existing CPU. I also want to point out that we have a current issue with Ryzen CPU used not hitting the intended boost clock speeds which AMD have announced that they will issue a new BIOS to fix this at the end of September. For now this motherboard does not contain that fix. So on to the unboxing. So at the front of the box we can see the MSI logo, the Tomahawk branding and Arsenal Gaming branding up in the top right hand corner. In the bottom left hand corner we have that AMD Ryzen 3000 desktop ready badge so you know that it's going to work straight out of the box and in the bottom right hand corner we have B450 and some details there PCI Express 3.0, Windows 10 ready and overclocking support. On the left hand side of the box again we're just continuing with that branding and we have a table which basically tells you what Ryzen CPUs are compatible with this motherboard. And on the other side we just have some of the key features on the board in various different languages. If we jump to the back of the box we can see a graphic of the motherboard down the centre and then a number of features down each side. On the left hand side we have the extended heatsink design, we have the flash BIOS button so that you can actually flash the BIOS without actually installing the CPU memory or graphics card onto the motherboard. AMD Turbo USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. Next we have the audio boost highlighted again on the motherboard. On the top right hand side we have the debug LEDs so that's going to help for troubleshooting with any issues that you might have. Next part down is a Turbo M.2 slot delivering speeds of up to 32 gigabytes per second per device using that Gen 3 connection and there's a graphic comparing that to SATA 3 speeds as well. This board also has RGB with 16.8 million colours and 10 LED effects and we have steel armour so that, that's the bracket around the PCI Express 3.0 slot where your graphics card is going to be so it's nice to see that they've added a steel element around that so that you know that your GPU is going to be nice and secure. At the bottom there's also a list of specifications which I won't go through in huge detail but you can also pause it and look through them at your own leisure and in the bottom right hand corner we have that IO overview which I'll show you in a minute. So let's get into that box. First thing we have is the motherboard so I'm going to just move it out of the way for a moment and then underneath the motherboard we have a number of things included in the box. You've got that IO bracket I actually really like the design, it's got some of the branding on here and it looks quite nice actually. Next we've got two SATA cables, then we have True Gaming MSI badge, there's also an M.2 screw, that looks like it'll be easy to lose so keep hold of that. We've got a DVD with all the motherboard drivers on there but you probably want to download them from the website anyway. So here we have some of MSI's other products, graphics cards, headsets, keyboards etc. There is a product registration card quick installation guide, a promotion where you can enter a competition if you give a shout out to MSI and then finally you've got that motherboard manual which is going to come in very handy. 
So let's take a look at that motherboard. It's worth pointing out actually that when you are building a PC, it's best to actually put your motherboard on something stable, something like the box that the motherboard actually came in. Just make sure you don't put it on the carpet or anything like that that's gonna create static. And here we have the motherboard. First impressions are it looks absolutely fantastic. I love the color design, it's a matte black finish with contrasting white elements in it and it'll go nicely with the case that I'm actually looking to get for this. I'm looking at the NZXT 510 or 510i in the white, so that contrast will look great. So starting at the top of the motherboard and going left to right, we have the 8-pin CPU power connector, the large heatsink and VRMs that surround the CPU socket. It's an AM4 CPU socket and the BIOS should be ready for the new Ryzen CPUs right out of the box. In the top right hand corner we have the CPU fan connector, we have an RGB connector, we then have a pump fan connector for liquid cooling and next to it system fan 3, ATX power connector and then you've got your four memory slots down the middle so this board can take up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Continuing down the side of the board we have another system fan connector followed by four SATA connectors. There are six in total, four on this side, two at the back end of the board, which I'll show you in a moment. Then across the middle and below the CPU socket, we have the M.2 connection. If you want to install an M.2 SSD on the board, you need to be aware that actually it will disable the two SATA ports at the bottom right hand corner of the motherboard. We've got the first of the PCI Express connectors. So this is where your GPU will be housed. Two slots below are PCIe 2.0 times one. We then have another Another PCIe 2.0 times 16 and then the final PCIe 2.0 times 1. Just to the right of the PCIe slots we have that final heatsink. There is a plastic film on there so before you boot the system up make sure you do peel that off. God that's so satisfying. On the bottom right hand side of the motherboard, if we go from right to left, we have those additional two SATA connections, USB 3.1 connection, two USB 2 connectors, the various pins for the front panel connectors, so your power LED, power switch, hard drive LEDs and reset switch, etc. We then have TPM, COM connector, another system fan connector, another RGB connection and the audio connection at the end. So in the back I.O. plate, from left to right we have the flash BIOS button, two USB 2.0 ports, the PS2 port for the old style mouse or keyboard. Next we have a DVI port along with HDMI. Of course, the only way to use these is with a CPU with an integrated GPU, also known as an APU. Above that we have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, one gigabit LAN port, one type A USB 3.2 port and one type C USB 3.2 port. And finally, the audio ports for that 7.1 channel surround sound. So how much does this max goodness cost? Well, currently on Amazon, you can get this for around the £110 mark. And if you compare that to the previous Tomahawk version, the non-max version at £107, there's obviously a tiny premium on there. Although that is a little bit disappointing because not that long ago, the non-max version was selling for around the £90 mark. At this moment of time, there's also no confirmed release date for the US, but as and when it becomes available, I'll put the links in the description for both the UK and the US. I'm going to be pairing the Tomahawk Max motherboard with the Ryzen 7 3700X CPU. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in seeing how that goes, then hit that subscribe button and look out for the video in future. So guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Let me know if this is going to be a motherboard of choice for you guys. And if you've already got the board, what your experiences have been like so far. Thanks again, and we'll see you all in the next video.